Hey, good morning, Soul Kids. We are back online. I know that there are a ton of you who are at Soul Camp with us this week. In a few words, type in the comments how awesome your week was here. We want to know what your favorite sport was and who your favorite leader was and maybe drop a comment if there is anything that those who are coming to camp next week need to know. In this week's lesson, we are joining the Israelites in the desert once again. Last week, we heard the story of when Aaron, Moses' brother, took all the gold from the Israelites and built an idol for the Israelites to worship. God was so upset and Moses was so angry. This week, we will learn why God was angry about that. But before we get there, here is our song of the month, the song of our summer, Endless Praise by the Planet Shakers.
dolls at your house? We have a couple. Well, like what? Well, my siblings and I begged my parents for a dog, but the deal was that we could get a dog if, and only if, we cleaned up after it. That sounds kind of like a chore. I guess. Maybe this is more rule-like. We aren't allowed on any screen time after 8.30pm. We have to brush our teeth before going to bed, and we can't make up mom and dad before 7 o'clock on Christmas Day. And we can't put empty cereal boxes away in the cupboard either. Okay, those sound more like rules. Yeah. I also have to do all my homework before I can play with my friends, I have to clean up my toys when I'm done playing with them, and I can't listen to music too loudly. I have to finish what's on my plate before I can have dessert, I need to get some exercise every day, I have to go to school, and I need to go to bed at a reasonable time. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, you most certainly have rules at your house. That's obvious. Yeah. Um, what about listening to your parents? Is that a rule that you were ever told? Or do you just know that it's a rule? I mean, my parents never sat me down to say, you must obey what we say. They're my parents. Of course I'm going to listen to them. Well, that's where our story comes in today. The Israelites had lived in Egypt for so long, they didn't really even know God. These kids grew up knowing the gods that Pharaoh worshipped. God needed to teach the Israelite people how to obey God. So God took the Israelites out of Egypt, then gave them a list of rules? That sounds boring. Okay, well, it can be boring if you look at it that way. But the part of the Bible we are reading today is so full of clues about who God is and what God wants from us, those that he has created. I can't wait to dive in. Me neither. Let's watch our video. Three months after the Israelites left Egypt, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They camped in front of the mountain. God had a plan to make the Israelites his special people. God wanted to make a covenant or agreement with the people of Israel. Moses went up the mountain. God called to him saying, this is what you should tell the Israelites. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I rescued you and brought you to me. If you listen carefully to me and you keep my covenant, you will be my people. Moses went back to the people and told them what God had said. All the people agreed. They responded together. We will do all the Lord has spoken. So Moses went back to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud. I want the people to hear me speak to you so that they will believe you. Moses told the people what God said, and he got the people ready for the Lord to come down on the mountain. God told Moses to put boundaries around the mountain so no one would get too close. On the morning of the third day, thunder rumbled and lightning lit up the sky. A thick cloud came down on the mountain and a loud trumpet sounded. Everyone in the camp shuddered. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. God came down on Mount Sinai in a fire and smoke covered the mountain. The mountain shook and the sound of the trumpet got louder and louder. God told the people not to come up the mountain. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I freed you from slavery, he said. Then God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. These are the first four commandments. These commandments told the Israelites what it looks like to have a right relationship with God. Do not have other gods besides me. Do not make an idol for yourself. Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. When God finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two stone tablets that he had written on with his own finger. God is holy and separate from sin. His law shows us what he requires, perfect righteousness. Our sin separates us from God. But Jesus came to bring us back to God. Jesus is perfectly righteous. When we trust in Jesus, he takes away our sin and welcomes us into God's family. Whoa, could you imagine being an Israelite and standing at the foot of the mountain and having the presence of God shake the mountain? It would be so scary, that's for sure. 
And to have to be Moses to climb the mountain would be even scarier. Why does God have to show up so scarily? Couldn't God just come down in a gentle breeze? <laughs> well, God can, and he does. But think of the Israelites. They had spent their whole lives hearing about how great the Egyptian gods were. The God of Israel needed to show up in an incredibly powerful way to show the Israelites that he is much greater than those gods that Egypt worships. Well, I think he did a good job of that. Absolutely. But now, looking at the rules that God gave the Israelites... The Ten Commandments? Yes. I want to focus on the first four. These commands, or rules if you will, tell the Israelites how they are supposed to interact with God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make your, for yourself an idol. Well, they broke that one already. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord, and you must remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Exactly. Those four commandments tell the Israelites how their relationship with God is going to work. God wants to be the God of the Israelites. Remember, he chose them all the way back when it was just Abraham. But since God is holy, the people have to behave in a particular way. Holy? Like Swiss cheese? <laughs> no. Holy as in set apart. God cannot be near our sin. He could not be near the sin of the Israelites. Simply saying something bad about God or worshipping something that is not God is a sin. And it's that sin that God would not be near. Since God wanted to be near the Israelites, he needed them to be holy as he was holy. Isn't that a Bible verse? Be holy since I am holy? You bet. And that's the verse that has been our key theme for this summer. From Le Leviticus 11 verse 44 we read, I am the Lord your God. Devote yourself to me and be holy as I am holy. Just to confirm, you are not telling me to go to the craft cabinet, grab a hole puncher, and start using a hole puncher on my ears, right? No. Being holy means separating yourself from sin. As we learned all the way back in the Garden of Eden, sin is that thing which separates us from God. It, must, it might be thoughts we think, things we feel, or words we say, or actions we do. So many things can be sinful. So if all these things can be sinful, how does God expect us to be holy? He is perfect. Last time I checked, I wasn't. God knows we won't be perfect, but he wants us to try. As we learned at Easter, it's because of sin that Jesus came to earth, and it is for us that Jesus is coming back. In the meantime, we do what we can to be holy and live our lives apart from sin. So it sounds like we should say our key theme once more. I am the Lord your God. Devote yourself to me and be holy as I am holy. Thank you for joining us this morning online. For anyone watching who is coming to camp tomorrow, uh, we can't wait to see you. It's going to be a wild and fun week here at Creator Studio. Juniors, if you're looking for your video, be sure to check out the description below. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for using the things in our lives that are meant to harm us, ultimately for our good. Help us to remember all the times in our lives that you have kept your promises to each and every one of us. We love you. Amen. Bye.